I'm in a truly unique location. Only a handful of times in history has temporary scaffolding enabled people to stand here, outside the clock face of one of the world's most famous landmarks. We're here to show you how the clock tower known as Big Ben is getting a 21st century makeover. One of our most sort of loved buildings as a country. It represents the country around the world, so we've, we've got to get it right. To bring up uh, this building to the 21st century, it's essential to maintain it for our future generations. Big Ben doesn't belong to one single person, it belongs to everyone. It's going to be enormously rewarding when we get to take down the scaffolding and get to show everyone what we've been working on for the last few years. Rising dramatically above the Palace of Westminster in the political heart of the UK's capital, the Elizabeth Tower has witnessed some of the most significant moments in British history, standing as a symbol of resilience through two world wars, to emerge as an enduring beacon of democracy. While the tower is widely referred to as Big Ben, this name actually refers to the clock's main bell, which first marked the hour on the tower's completion back in 1859. In the 160 years since, as London has evolved from the capital of the British Empire into one of the world's leading financial centres, the tower has been subject to weathering, pollution and wartime bomb damage. Despite undergoing several deep cleans and refurbishments over the decades, 2017 saw the first complete restoration commence. Set to cost almost £80 million, the four-year project will restore the building's external fabric, renovate the clock itself, improve internal areas, add energy-efficient lighting and install an elevator. Working on a project of this profile, in such a secure and demanding location above a live parliament, is an extreme task. With its bells silenced to avoid deafening workers and only ringing to mark Remembrance Day and New Year, UK contractor Sir Robert McAlpine first enclosed the entire tower in scaffolding, a careful process that took six months to complete. We built the scaffold obviously from the ground up to the top uh, and then the works to the exterior envelope of the building start from the top and then work down to the bottom. So right at the top of the scaffold um, is the cast iron roof which is about the, the top third of the tower. All of the roof is made of cast iron so we've got cast iron tiles uh, which sit on a cast iron structure and then there's various other bits of ornamentation so wrought iron ornamentation and copper and brass and things. The iron roof tiles and much of the decorative detailing at the top of the tower was removed and taken off-site for hand restoration. The contractor looking after the cast iron roofs before us has a really well thought out system. Every single component has a unique number on it and regardless of where it is in the country we're able to log on and see its location um, within the tower, what work has been done to it, whether it's been recast and where its current location within the country is. Progressing down the tower, the quality of every piece of stonework was assessed. Where replacement stone was needed, craftsmen painstakingly hand-carved replacements in an on-site facility at the base of the tower. In total, more than 700 new segments were created and installed. This here is a great place to see three generations of stonework in one location. So this here is an original stone that was put in when the Elizabeth Tower was first constructed. This is actually a replacement piece of stone that was put in in an earlier restoration. But as you can see, they actually used a more porous type of stonework and this hasn't weathered as well as the original stonework, despite this being newer. And then this down here is a new stone that was put in as part of this restoration project. Now, unfortunately, this stone from the original quarry isn't available anymore as this tower was constructed 160 years ago. But what the team have done is match the stonework as best they can, and in time, this will weather, so Big Ben will look much more like it did when it was first constructed. This here is stone that has been restored as part of this project, and this is the colour that the stone was before this project started. So you can see the colour difference is extraordinary. 
The most impressive part of these works is undoubtedly the restoration of the clock faces themselves, and being able to get up close and actually touch the face of Big Ben was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Each of the 324 pieces of hand-cut glass on each face are being replaced, while the colouring of the hands, numerals and surrounding decoration is being restored to the striking blue, green and gold shown on the tower's original design. The works that we're doing to the clock faces are more significant than, than have been done in the past. So the glass you can see at the moment is all entirely new. It was last reglazed in the 1950s um, after the damage was caused by bombing in the Second World War. So what we've done is we've taken all of the glass out, um, we've blasted all of the paint systems off the clock dial, so it's gone right back to the original cast iron. The reason for doing that is we have to do repairs to the cast iron, so there's, there's a limited amount of corrosion, but there's also some original casting defects, so little pinholes in the cast iron uh, that need drilling out so they can be filled and repaired. Uh, and then we put the highest quality paint system back on again. As part of that, obviously, we strip all of the previous layers of paint off, so we have to do a lot of research about what the previous colour schemes were. Um, so finding out the history of the colours has been really, uh, really imagine, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> obviously the blue is, is a very new addition for everyone to see. Yeah, and it's not, I must say, as long as you're up close to it here, you really get just how much of a difference it is. It looks fantastic. It's, it's lovely, the blue. Yeah, it really shines in the sunshine. With a requirement for at least one face of the tower to be left exposed at all times during the works, Londoners have been getting a glimpse of what awaits them when the restoration is complete. Before 2017, the only way to reach the top of the tower was by a narrow stone staircase, a daunting obstacle for clockkeepers and visitors alike. Since the tower's been built, there's only been one way up and one way down from the belfry, which has been the, the, the spiral stone staircase in the yeah. corner of the tower. Uh, what sits next to the spiral stone staircase is a ventilation shaft that goes all the way from the basement all the way up to the belfry. Uh, so what we're doing is we're fitting a lift into the ventilation shaft so that you'll have two ways up and two ways down. The new elevator added in these works, cleverly hidden within the Elizabeth Tower's original structure, improves access for maintenance and evacuations. The team began their works at the top of the tower and are steadily working their way down, gradually removing the scaffolding as they progress. Big Ben is now beginning to re-emerge on London's skyline, and the extent of its transformation is dramatic. Led by a young and technology-savvy team, from craftsmen to information modelling specialists, the restoration of this heritage structure has been helped by some truly 21st century techniques. Many of the original paper plans and records from previous maintenance projects were incomplete or inaccurate, and understanding the tower's structure and condition was a challenging task. To address this and make future restorations easier, the project team are creating detailed digital records of almost every aspect of the Elizabeth Tower, building off the tagging and tracking system used in the works. What we did at the start was a point cloud of the project uh, to understand how, how the building was working. So for instance, we have a slight lean in the lift shaft, so to place a um, vertical structure in, in that space, we needed to have this information, knowing exactly how the building had been working and then understanding this to, for the construction. So we have a full model of the tower. Um, we have a model of each individual stone and each individual tile. Um, in, in the tower as well, um, so we can actually we can apply loads of information about what happened to those elements in the past, what we're doing now, and then hopefully it'll be useful in the uh, in the future. The heart of the tower, which is the clock, we don't have a full comprehensive set of records. Um, as part of this project, we are engaging with those new technologies to ensure that we have a full comprehensive set of O&Ms and also the computer models which will support that in the future. So if there's ever a need to make a new component, we don't need to stop the clock per se, we can go and have it cast separately. As this team worked to restore Big Ben for our generation, they've discovered notes and messages tucked into crevices and openings in the stonework, left behind from previous workers wishing them well. The restoration of Big Ben is in fact taking place in advance of a much larger and highly complex refurbishment across the Palace of Westminster. 
As works progress into the Lords and Commons chambers, the UK's Parliament will be temporarily relocated. Standing through the reigns of six British monarchs, the tenures of 30 different Prime Ministers, and some of the greatest and darkest moments of its country's history, Big Ben has witnessed the birth of modern Britain. Despite falling silent in recent years, what the remarkable team have achieved behind this scaffolding, through thousands of hours of carving, gilding and documenting, with extreme care and attention to detail, will return this British icon to its former glory, allowing it to stand as a symbol of free democracy for generations to come. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.